Good morning everybody, Hi, Mileage Rider here and we are riding on this glorious Saturday morning in sunny Edmonton, Alberta. Today's ride is going to involve a first ride impressions of the Royal Enfield Himalayan. If this is a bike that interests you, come along. Welcome back everybody. As I said this morning, we are going to be doing a first ride impression of the 2022 Royal Enfield Himalayan. This again is only my impressions of a first ride on this bike. It may not be exactly what you think of this bike, and that's fine. I will give some of the specs on the bike, but the majority of them you can look up on Mr. Google. He's very wonderful, or she is very wonderful for that. We actually have our first test ride days in Edmonton that I've been able to find. No other brand has enough bikes available to do a test ride days. There are a number of bikes I was hoping to ride this year and give a first ride impressions of, but again, due to COVID, not a lot of bikes out there. So we are going to relish this ride. Unfortunately, it will be a setup ride, so it'll probably be 30, 40 minutes long and be a pre-prescribed loop that we will be on, but we will make it as much fun as we can. We'll see you at the dealership. Okay everybody, this is the Royal Enfield Test Ride Days. This will be first impressions of bike number seven, the Royal Enfield Himalayan. So first thing I noticed getting on this bike uh, is it is actually a carbureted bike. There is the choke. We have flash to pass for our indicators, high beam, low beam, turn signals, horn, kill switch, hazards, and the start button. Of course it has an ignition key and you can see that the dash is in kilometers and miles per hour. There is a analog top and a digital portion on the bottom which has a clock, outside temperature, multiple trip computers, fuel gauge, an actual compass saying I'm facing north, I'm not sure if I am, attack, all of your idiot lights, and you've actually got a GPS here. This syncs up with your Google Maps and will uh, give you, I believe, we'll see it's an arrow or something that shows you where your next turn is. This bike is only $8,000. It's a 411cc bike. It's got 25 horsepower and 32 newton meters of torque. It has a 21 inch front wheel and a 17 inch rear. It looks like it comes with a 70-30 tire on it. I'm not sure, we'll take a closer look when we get back. It does have ABS. 3.3 gallon uh, fuel tank. They say it gets around 75 to 80 miles per gallon. So yeah, we'll see you out on the road. We're going to go out in two groups, I forgot to say. It looks like I'll probably be part of the second group. The first group's going to go out and then we're going to go out about five minutes later. We're going to go 
down the Yellowhead to 97th, up 97th to 153, 153 to the Anthony Henday, the Henday around back to Yellowhead and back here. It's about a 30 minute ride. It's a fairly structured test ride. You know, it'll be staggered formation. They make sure to let you know at the beginning, you know, no passing, no gapping, no slowing down and then giving her the beans to see how she accelerates. Keep everything safe. So we'll see you on the road. And off we go. Okay, so we've got a little bit of in-town riding till we get out on the highway. So let's just make an adjustment of the mirrors. There we go. The mirrors are actually, uh, well, let's start at uh, comfort and ergonomics and all that good stuff. Again, this is just a first ride impression. We're not doing all the technical data. Seating position on this bike. Seating position on this bike for me is a little cramped. I'm uh, six feet tall with a 34 inch inseam. All my length is in my legs. And I have uh, a lot more knee bend than I do on my Super T. I'll let you know as we go through the ride if it's something that would be considered uncomfortable. Uh, the seat feels quite comfortable. Um, again, I've only been on it a few minutes, but it feels like a pretty darn good good seat. The, uh, the seat is a stepped seat. Uh, rather than a flat board seat, so you lose a little bit of your ability to move around on the seat to get comfortable. So back to our uh, comfort and ergonomics. The, uh, as I said, the saddle is quite nice, a little more knee bend. Um, I noticed that the shifter is quite small. I have size 11 feet. Uh, I might need to get, if I was to buy this bike, I would need to get a uh, longer peg for the shifter because I notice as I pull up every once in a while, I miss it. Brake pedal seems very nice, in a good position, a good size. Reach to the handlebars is nice. Uh, the position of the bars is nice for me. I don't think I would need uh, bar risers or anything like that. Unfortunately, I won't be able to stand up on this bike until I get back to the dealership because uh, they would probably frown on that even though it's an adventure bike as I'm riding if I stand up. I've already mentioned all the controls that the bike has. They're very easy to see, very easy to read. I guess starting from the front of the bike you'll notice that there is a little There is a little uh, shorty windshield, which in the city really does allow a wonderful amount of airflow onto your chest. We'll see when we get on the highway if it uh, causes any buffeting or if I have smooth air due to the shape of the windshield. As I said, the gauges are all in a really good position. Easy to read, easy to see. Uh, the mirrors are pretty good. I get about one third of the mirror covered by my shoulders. So 
this bike has a 21 inch front wheel. This is actually my very first time riding a bike with a 21 inch front wheel. People had told me to expect it to feel twitchy. I don't think that's the case. I mean, I can't swerve back and forth because that's another one of the things they don't want you to do on the test ride days. But as we get on the highway, we'll see. So, going back to controls here, I have a cable front brake, I have a cable clutch, and as I said, this is carbureted, not fuel injected. There's my choke right there. Uh, standard rubber grips. Everything seems to work well for the price point. Again, keep in mind that this bike is only $8,000 uh, without bags or anything, but it's $8,000 Canadian. Which is a really attractive price point. The 411cc single cylinder is uh, air and oil cooled. And you definitely need to ring it. Uh, you got to get up there in the RPMs in order to uh, get power. Uh, you want to be, you know, five, six thousand RPMs in town with bumpy roads, potholes, uh, imperfections in the road. The uh, the suspension feels very nice, actually. As far as I know, it is non-adjustable. The uh, the front forks are a regular fork; they're not an upside down. But the ride is very nice in the city. This is not a bike you should buy if you want to go fast. If you want to go to track days, if you want to go out ride with your friends on sport bikes, this is not the bike for you. This is a bike, in my opinion, for relaxing, you know, commuting to work, uh, I think this would be great for commuting to work. It's nice and narrow, nice and small. Uh, you've got a nice high seating position for traffic. It will just, from what I've heard, it will just go the speed limit on the highway. So you will not, in Alberta the speed limit's 110 kilometers an hour, you will not be zipping to 130, 140 to pass someone. The bike just simply will not go that fast. So yeah, going over these uh, imperfections in the road, uh, the suspension's really nice, I really like it. There is a uh, rack in the front of the bike here, and you can strap water, extra fuel, uh, extra cargo stuff to it. I'm sure it does have a weight limit. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but again, Mr. or Mrs. Google can let you know that. There's also a rack on the back for strapping stuff too. It does have a limit of seven kilograms stamped on it. This bike is quite low to the ground. I am very easily able to flat foot and have knee bend, which makes you feel very secure. I think this bike would be great for someone who's, oh gosh, if you were 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, you'd have no problem riding this bike. It's very well balanced, feels nice and light. There is some adjustment in the handlebars if you needed it. You can undo these uh, four bolts and roll the handlebars forward and back. And of course, you'd always have the choice of bar risers, should you need them. So no problem going the speed limit in the city. The, I just realized this, this here that I thought was a compass is actually the gear indicator. I'm in third gear. And before, when it said N, it was not pointing north, it was neutral. <laughs> That's awesome. 
So I believe in Edmonton there is only one Royal Enfield dealership, and that is at Alberta Cycle on Yellowhead. As I mentioned, or I think I mentioned earlier, uh, this is the very first test ride days in all of Edmonton for the last two and a half, three years because of COVID. First, because of COVID, you couldn't be together. Now, COVID is essentially over, depending on who you ask, uh, but the suppliers have no bikes to have demo days with. The only place I've seen in Edmonton where you can ride a bike is you can go to any Harley dealer and they'll let you take a bike out to test ride if you're interested in buying. And this Royal Enfield test ride days, that's it. Nobody else has bikes. So I'm in third gear at 60 kilometers an hour. And uh, we're at 4,500 RPMs, so not too taxing on the motor. If I have time today, I would love to ride one of the 650 interceptors. Looks like a really nice retro naked bike. This bike really does seem to have everything you would need for an in-town commuter. When I looked at the motor as I did the walk around, it seems pretty open. It looks like it would be pretty easy to do your uh, own maintenance if you chose to. Nice, easy to see uh, turn indicators on the dash. Okay, let's see what this 411cc motor can do on the highway. Hopefully this wind noise is not too loud for you to hear the audio. It is a very windy day today. Okay, so the Royal Enfield Himalayan is only a five speed, but I can easily, I'm not sure what that other fellow was talking about, I am easily going at 100 kilometers an hour at just under 5,000 RPM. And now I'm going 110 at 5,300 RPM and this bike's doing it no problem. There is a lot of vibration. I feel it through the tank on my knees, uh, but not a lot of vibration in the handlebars, surprisingly. And even more surprising is this little shorty windshield provides a lot of wind protection. I mean, I have wind on my shoulders, but I do not have any buffeting on my helmet at all. And I'm wearing an adventure helmet with a peak. The wind just seems to go right over the top of my helmet. As I was saying, if you only had eight or ten thousand dollars to spend and you wanted one bike that could do it all, that could drive you to work, you could go out on the weekends, find a nice place to go ride off-road, this would be an awesome bike to do it. As long as you were not in a hurry to get there, because again, this is not a fast bike. But it is really comfortable on the highway at 100 kilometers an hour. I'm very, very impressed. And as I say, I'm a big guy, six feet, 200 pounds. So now we're gonna make a cut to get back onto the yellow head and head back to the dealership. So the speeds here will be about 80 kilometers an hour. This 21 inch front wheel is very nice. It is not. It is not twitchy. Uh, it tracks beautifully. Suspension is really nice on the highway as well as in town. Not too soft, not too hard. Again, that's for me, you may feel differently. Yeah, this could be your one bike to do everything as long as you weren't in a hurry. Great gas mileage at 75 or 80 miles per gallon. 
So this bike will do 120. We were at like 5,800 RPMs. But it will do it with a 200 pound man on it. Again, I know I've said this a number of times, but this bike is really, really comfortable. This bike is much more than I thought it was going to be, if you just look at the stats. Of course, this bike is chain drive, so you'll have to do your chain maintenance. But it does come with a side stand and a center stand, which makes it much easier to do your maintenance. I'm not sure what the intervals are for maintenance. Hey everybody, sorry for the disruption in the video. Unfortunately, my GoPro cut out for some reason. It took a stone on one of our trips and I have a crack on the bottom of the lens and I think it has affected uh, the GoPro Hero 5 Black. Looks like I'll have to buy a new one for next year. As I was saying before I got cut off, I'm not sure what the service intervals are for this bike, but it's something that you can look up either on Google or by calling your local Royal Enfield dealership. So you didn't get to see the last little bit of the ride. It was just coming up to the dealership, making the right hand turn into the parking lot. This test ride days was really nice. It was very well run. The staff were extremely courteous and knowledgeable. Uh, they had about 15 bikes there for people to ride. And as I was saying that uh, this is the first test ride days I've been able to do in two to three years. Again, first because of COVID, people weren't allowed to be around each other. And now because of the tail end of COVID, or so people may or may not believe, there is no product for the uh, different manufacturers to have to send out the trucks to do test ride days. So it was wonderful getting out and trying a different bike. The bike itself was really, really good. I was very surprised at what it had to offer. Now, having said that, it is a really slow bike. <laughs> okay, so if you're buying this bike or if you're looking for this kind of bike, say, or 450 cc's or less just be aware that you will not be winning any speed contests now most people looking for a bike like this aren't con that concerned about speed they just want to make sure they can go the posted speed limit on whatever roads they drive on to give you some uh, backstory i have had a chance to do extensive riding on the ktm 390 i have had a chance to do uh, quite a few rides on the bmw 310 and now this Royal Enfield 411 cc and of all three of those bikes that I've ridden the Royal Enfield was actually the most comfortable for me it is a little small of a bike for me uh, I was being generous saying I was 200 pounds I weighed myself and I'm actually 211 so six feet tall 211 pounds uh, it'll scoot me down the road at 120 k an hour now would I be comfortable going on our long trips of 10,000 kilometers driving 8 to 10 hours a day at 120 kilometers an hour going through the states probably not but if you're looking for one bike that can do it all you can can go on the highway uh, you can grow, go on um, range roads, you can go on gravel, you can go off-road, you can drive in the city, sitting up nice and tall, you'll have a very good vantage point of traffic. For $8,000, it would be pretty hard not to beat a bike like this, especially with a three-year unlimited kilometer warranty. So, do yourself a favor if you're in this market for this kind of bike, give the Royal Enfield Himalayan a test ride and uh, I think you might be uh, surprised especially if you're smaller than me now as always we'll see you in the next video keep that right hand cranked and the rubber side down